Hi, welcome to my Birds Has Pets Species Spotlight. And today's spotlight's going to be about the budgie, like this little guy here, right? That's Sterling, say hello to everybody. Did you know that the budgie is one of the most popular pets in the world, just ranking behind dogs and cats? I can see why, because they're so cute. Yes, you are so cute. They're so cute, they're small, they're very inexpensive to buy. They're very intelligent, very lively. They can be tamed very easily and you know that they can mimic the human speech. Some budgies can speak to over a thousand words. Now budgies have to be taught to speak and some won't speak but some will. It's best to have one budgie over a flock of budgies because when there's a flock of budgies they all just talk to each other in budgie language and they don't really you know, care or want to learn their human speech. So they'll start off with one budgie and um, hopefully they'll talk. And a male is, is better at speaking than a female, but females do speak as well. Now some people call them parakeets, which they are, but the parakeets, it's a group of birds. It's a group of um, different sizes of birds, different variety of birds. There's like the Indian ringneck parakeet, there's the bork parakeet, there's a red romp parakeet, a uh, mustache parakeet, a turquoise parakeet, and the list goes on. There's a lot of different parakeets. So if you have a budgie and someone asks you what kind of bird you have, you can simply say a budgie. But if you say a parakeet, just make sure to tell them it's a budgie. But to the average person who doesn't know birds and they're not sure there's other parakeets around, other different kinds, they'll just assume it's a budgie. Because when you hear the word parakeet, you just assume it's a budgie. But to the knowledgeable bird person, you say a parakeet, you're like, oh, what kind? Because I have several parakeets and they're, they're not budgies. They're other, other parakeets. Did you know that there are three different sizes of budgies? There's the Australian budgie, and then there's the wild budgie, and then there's the English budgie. Now the Australian budgie, sometimes called the American budgie, is the one you see in the pet trade, the one you see at the pet stores. They're about six to seven inches long from tail um, to the head. And then in the wild, they're a little bit smaller. They're about five to six inches from the tail to the head. And then you have the English budgies. They're about nine to 11 inches and sometimes bigger. The English budgies are the ones you see at the bird shows. They've originated from England and they were bred for showing. They're really pretty. I have them as well as the, the regular size uh, budgie. And um, some of them can be quite huge and they're both, they're both beautiful birds. And I find the English budgie is a little bit more docile and a little bit easier to tame than a, a regular size budgie. I call them regular <laughs> regular budgies. You can call them regular budgies or American budgies or Australian budgies or parakeets. They can go by many, many names. Now the average lifespan of a budgie could be anywhere between 10 to 15 years. I mean, some have lived longer, some maybe eight years or 10 years. It depends on the bird. If they're really healthy, they can live up to 15 years, maybe a few years longer. So that's not too bad. Now the budgie, they come in so many colors, so many varieties and so many colors. They come in like pines and spangles and uh, greens, grays, blues, violets, there's cinnamon, there's lace wing, there's cinnamon wing. The list goes on. There's so many colors. Colors are just gorgeous. Now this little boy here, this is Sterling. He's the gray spangle. Isn't he beautiful? So let me know if you have a budgie. I'm going to put a poll above here. Just write yes or no. I'm just curious to see if you have a budgie if you're watching my video. So if you're interested in getting a budgie, you already have one, and you want a flock of budgies, I recommend getting a flock of males because males get along much better than a, than a flock of females. Females are always bickering and fighting with each other. Um, right now I have eight budgies and they're all males and they get along just fine. And I did have some females and then there was trouble because they all want to fight over the females and the males fight with each other to get to the females. So if you don't want to breed, you just want pets, I suggest a flock of males and um, then you won't have very many problems. Now I get a lot of questions of asking, you know, is my budgie a male or a female? And it's sometimes very difficult to tell, especially when they're babies and different mutations will have different color uh, sears. 
Like he has uh, a blue sear, but I have another male who has a pink sear. So usually the males when they're older, they will either have a blue sear or a pink, like the purplish, purplish, <laughs> purplish, purplish uh, sear. Well, the females, um, they can have like a light blue. So when they're young, some people think the female's a male because it's blue, but that's not always true. When, when males are babies, that the sear looks like pink and people assume pink is female. So it's really difficult. Sometimes I can't even tell. And, uh, but when they're older, it's easy to tell. The females will have, some, sometimes they have a light blue, even white, but they'll have white right around the little, I was gonna point to my nostrils, right around their nostrils. You can look at the camera. Around their nostrils, they have white around their nostrils. And um, they'll have a light blue sear, almost white, but then it'll go tan. And when they're in a breeding mode, it'll turn like dark brown. That's when you know your female's ready to breed. It'll be dark brown and the males will be like, bright blue or pink, very, very nice. Budgies, they're very easy to breed. They always wanna breed, but do your research. I'm not gonna talk about breeding because it's not a breeding video. I'm not a professional breeder, but please do your research if you wanna breed your birds. You have to know what age, there's a certain diet they need, a certain um, nest box, certain materials. There's a lot into breeding and genetics and all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm not gonna really go into breeding, but just do your research, okay? It could be very fun and very rewarding, but the only thing is, you have to find a home for all the babies, unless you're gonna, you're gonna keep them like I did. <laughs> I have a hard time letting my babies go and uh, to find the right home. So, um, you know, if that's a concern to you, just don't breed, just have them as pets, have males, and you can have a good time uh, with your budgies. Now another difference I notice with the males and the females, the females I find they're chewers, they chew and they actually bite, they bite a lot. Do you have a female budgie, does she bite? Let me know, I wanna know if she bites because I find the females bite. I've mostly had males, I've never really had a problem with the females that I had are always kind of nippy but they do chew a lot, especially breeding season because they wanna chew to make you know a nest, they just get into a chewing mode. So I find that the males don't really do that. I mean, the males can bite as well, but I find the male, the females a little bit more nippier. So if you just want to get one budgie, I suggest a male, but you know what? Females might be okay too. It might just be me and my experience with the birds I had, because I haven't had a lot of females, but um, just a suggestion for you. Now budgies can be a little little noisy they're always chattering they're always chattering like all, almost all day even when they're getting sleepy they kind of mumble and they're chirping it's kind of cute and they're sleeping closing their eyes while they're, they're chirping and then they like to chirp to each other always chat 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 then they have a little nap My, mine have a nap actually around three to four they nap they're quiet and then they start up again of course but they're noisy from morning till three or four it's quiet and then they're noisy again until their bedtime, which um, my bird's bedtime is around nine o'clock and they know they go to bed and they're all quiet. So if you don't like a lot of noise and you don't like a lot of constant noise, then don't get a budgie. And sometimes they do make a louder noise, they get a shrill or squeaking that a lot of people don't like. But I like, I love, actually love budgies. I love their sound. I like listening to them. I mean, one budgie is not going to make a lot of noise, maybe two, but I have eight, so it does get loud. And if you got more than eight, that'll be really loud. <laughs> so if you're noise sensitive and you don't like the noise, just don't don't get a budgie. And health-wise for a budgie, they can pretty well get what any bird can get, whatever disease any other bird gets. And basically the care of a budgie is their nails. You would have to get their nails uh, clipped or if you learn how to do it yourself. And usually their beak is okay unless it's misaligned, it would need trimming. But if it's a nice, straight you know beak it is not crooked or anything and usually doesn't need trimming unless they get sick if they get a liver problem their beak does grow so always pay attention to their beak make sure you offer a lot of chew toys and chew blocks mineral blocks cut a bone cut a bone is really soft so it doesn't really do anything for their beak it's more for calcium more than mineral blocks and wood to chew on or shredding toys to keep their beak moving that should help their beak but generally a healthy budgie never really needs his a beak trim they need the nails trimmed though and if you trim the flight feathers that will need to be done as well so if you take them to an avian vet or a bird groomer they can do both of those uh, for you for the care of your bird and also for their feed you can get like a petty perch just make sure the perch is placed lower or just near a food dish you don't want to put it up high because 
that perch can actually hurt their feet if they're sleeping on that perch all night it can cause like bumble foot or a sore in their feet so make sure it's not their main perch just put it low lower on so occasionally they go on it and then it'll file the um the the nails and don't use the sand perches they don't really work i would get the petty the petty perch and just um it will help with the nails so that will help a little bit but i find they always kind of need their nails clipped at one time or another throughout their lives cage wise i mean bigger is always better now for one budgie i recommend the smallest size being 18 by 18 for one budgie possibly two it depends on how often you let your bird out i mean the bird should come out on a daily basis to come out and play to fly if he's, if he's fully flighted and just so he doesn't live a life in a small little square box you know for 10 to 15 years that's not nice but um 18 by 18 is is a fair size don't go any smaller than that but bigger is always better and longer is always better if you can't how you listening to me is a good boy if you can't let your bird out a lot then get a flight cage my favorite flight cage is the hq flight cage it's uh 32 inches long by 21 inches wide i'm not sure of the height but anyways you can have like maybe four four budgies in there two is okay one is okay even better he has all the space to himself and there's a lot of room in there for toys, different perches, different food bowls, things for them to do. And that way they have more space and it's a better life than living in a small tiny cage all its life. So just think about how your bird will live and enjoy it, its life. Just make the best life for it that you can. Now my budgie's cage is, is the HQ flight cage, but my birds are out daily. They come out all day. I have a bird room. If you're new to my channel, I will put the link below to my bird room and you can see how my birds live and, and how they fly all day, all the space they have. Yeah, as they come and go, so I have eight budgies, but seven of them are together now and one of them actually is a new budgie. I'm going to show you the picture right above here. He's a new budgie. I've only had him for two weeks. I haven't introduced him yet, but I'm showing you his picture because I'm quarantining him uh, right now. So I'll do a video on him at another time. So I'm going to have eight budgies in the flight cage and then he'll be free flying um, with the birds as well so in my cage i have a lot of different perches uh, different toys different chewing blocks a lot of bowls because i have a lot of budgies you got to provide a lot of bowls so they don't fight and um, don't let one bird eat so you have to have enough bowls for all the birds and i have enough swings for all the birds because they fight over the swings and one of them can't be left out so I have enough swings and I have a, a corner stand there and I can put their food on there or their water or they can sit there and just roost. And I do put the paper over the grate because the budgies like to go on the ground. I don't want their feet to get hurt. So if you have a cage, it's best to take the grate out or put paper over it because if they land on it or playing on it or running on it, their foot can get stuck in there and they twist and then they can break. I've, seen it happen not my own words but i've seen on social media where people have said that's what happened you know i believe it can happen too imagine if we're running on grates all day and, and our foot slips and goes inside we're going to run and break our leg right so it's best not to use the grates if if you don't have to now my birds they eat a varied diet they do eat some budgie seed and they have uh, pellets i give them uh, tropicana pellets and uh, supreme pellets and along with that, they do have uh, fresh uh, greens, like vegetables, some fruit. I give them, mostly I give them spring mix or romaine lettuce. They get carrots and broccoli, apples, strawberry, corn, peas. They get to brown rice, quinoa. You can feed your bird a variety, variety of, of things they need besides the dry food. So make sure you offer a lot of food. They do have some millet. And they have some oats, spray oats. Uh, I just give them a lot of variety of food. And the Australian mix, they really love that too. So my budgies eat a lot of different food. It's good to offer them a lot of different food. Not too much seed because they can get um, fatty lumps and they can get overweight from not eating other foods and eating too much uh, seed. And especially if the rings are clipped, you wanna really cut back on that seed because they can't fly to exercise that, uh, that fat away. 
Now my budgie's got a lot of um, bathing options. Make sure you give your bird options to bathe, such as uh, running water. They love the running water. Or put a nice piece of lettuce in, in the water. And they, some birds like to just bathe on lettuce. You can hang it on the side of the cage and wet it. Sometimes they'll bathe that way. Or you can spritz them with a spray bottle. Or put different bowls of water. You can put it in the cage, on top of the cage. So always make sure you offer your bird um, different bathing methods. If they don't like to bath, the last option is to spray them with water. I mean, a mist. Don't blast them and scare them, right? You just want to mist them, but I'm sure you you know that, right? You didn't want to scare them. I mean, some budgies can even go into the shower with you. But uh, mine won't because they just fly away if I try to take them there. But uh, my budgies love to bathe all different, all different ways. So if you're thinking about getting a budgie, I recommend starting with one. And that way you can teach it to maybe talk. Hopefully maybe it will talk. Sometimes they don't talk though, so don't get disappointed. You can tame it and then you can, you know, add another budgie later on. But sometimes when you get another budgie, they might not want you as much and they might not want to learn so many words. But sometimes the second budgie will learn from the first budgie. So you'll have two talking birds saying the same words. That's what happened to my linnies. All my linnies say the same thing because they learned off of each other. It's kind of cute. So just get the one bird and start from there. Yep, up, honey. Up. Yep, up. You were a good boy. And I'll put some links down below. I'll put my budgie playlist down below, my bird room playlist, and any other budgie thing I can think of, I'll put down below. And I will um, see you in the next video. So I want to thank you very much for watching. And uh, we'll see you soon. I'm going to make my video about my new budgie hopefully pretty soon. So thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.